Hello, my name is Jason. I'm here to tell you a story about Green Taxi Cooperative. I'm going to try to condense um, 18 months of the story into 15 minutes. Um, as I start, I wanted to acknowledge that I'm an unlikely representative here today uh, to tell you this story. Green Taxi is comprised of 800 members from 37 countries speaking well over 100 languages, uh, comprised of a six-member board of directors uh, from Morocco to uh, East Africa. And I sit here today and just wanted to acknowledge the, um, the unrepresentative nature of, of my, my role here today. Um, I'm the attorney that founded uh, the organization on their behalf and represented them through the regulatory process to obtain a, approval to operate a regulated licensed taxi cab service in Denver, uh, Boulder, uh, and the broader metro area in, in Colorado. I started out my career as a labor attorney and have come full circle to work in the union co-op space, uh, now representing um, equitable ownership. So the story here today starts with, um, as it does in many cases, in many urban um, areas around the country, around the world, as we heard earlier this morning, um, with a regulated monopoly system of service uh, provision under utility model. And so in Denver, Colorado, we don't have a medallion system. We have a regulated licensed taxi cab market. It's regulated as a public utility, like energy, like, um, in many cases, water. And a, public, a regulated entity sets the uh, market supply and determines the qualifications for new entrants. Up until recently, this is what the map looked like. This is what it would have been um, in relative proportionality up until this year. With the two largest companies at the top, um, not coincidentally um, having been merged in the last two years to form one legal conglomerate that is by regulation now forced to operate um, in a quasi um, kind of antitrust broken up kind of fashion as two companies, but nevertheless they are centrally owned. Um, they operate as, as essentially franchises of national and in some cases global providers of taxi cab service. Um, one of these is owned by the largest single taxi cab operator in the world, a French company. Um, I believe it's the owner of Yellow Cab. Down at the bottom, we have the, um, and not coincidentally, the three most recent entrants in the market, two of which are uh, cooperatives, Union Taxi on the right and Mile High Cab in the middle. And as you can see, at approximately 370, represent a uh, little less than 25% of the overall taxi cab market in Denver, Colorado. So this is up until 2015. And as in many cases, the regulated utility system has failed to provide uh, consumer service that meets um, our growing need for convenience, cost, um, cost sensitivity, and um, socioeconomic and, and uh, racial sensitivity, long lines, inequitable service, and generally um, stakeholders that are uh, upset all across the map. Um, and we've, we've covered this. Um, the entrance of the sharing platforms has not only disrupted the market from a consumer standpoint, but has flooded the streets of Denver with upwards of 9,000 uh, Uber drivers uh, compared to 1,500 taxi cabs. And the anecdotes are, are really terrifying and are horrific. Um, the, my, a bunch of people tell me that it's you know, pretty much uh, a ghost town driving around at off hours and come peak hours, rush hour. Uh, this runs kind of contrary to what we heard this morning. Um, come rush hour when demand surges, the Uber drivers flood the street and there's no coincidence that uh, the number of accidents goes up, traffic among people just kind of driving around looking for fares has gone up, and um, it's become, uh, it's, it's, it's become um, like the, the, the fable of, of um, the Lord of the Flies, really. Enter uh, the, the, and this is really quite interesting. Colorado is a right to work state and um, has an incredibly low uh, private sector unionization rate. The Communication Workers of America uh, got involved. They were the incubators, incidentally, of Union Taxi in 2009, came together and have organized two legislative reforms in Colorado that have opened up the market. 
they've pushed for public policy to deregulate a formerly centrally command and controlled taxicab market. Leave it to the union to push a totally libertarian, pro-competition, pro-free market um, agenda that would open up the market for new entrants. So CWA incubated both Union Taxi and Green Taxi, provided the lion's share of support for the lobbying effort that would pass House Bill 1316 that would blow the market wide open in Denver. HB 151316 uh, passed and was, uh, went into effect in August 2015, and um, under the guise, a bipartisan uh, bill that passed um, by 99% approval of both houses, um, passed under a free market agenda. Republicans um, at the in the House were all over it, and at the same time promised to free the market from a share crop system of taxicab service. And that took um, a market where, for taxicab drivers, um, and I'm going to get into some of these numbers to, to show just how staggering this cost structure really is, it took the market from this to this. In the span of eight months, the market flipped completely. So we see two primary players that control upwards of 50% of the market that are centrally owned and have been legally separated for antitrust purposes to this. And Green Taxi is now the largest taxicab company in the entire state of Colorado. They are the largest taxi co-op to my knowledge, in the United States. And also, to my knowledge, they are the second largest worker cooperative in the United States. And they now occupy 37% of, uh, of the taxicab market in the broader metro area. So, well, that's just the beginning. So what is Green Taxi? Green Taxi is more than just a taxicab company, and it's more than just a ride-hailing service. It is and does work off of a mobile app, but it's taking uh, a strategy of off and online consumer access, bridging the best parts of the platform economy with that of the offline consumer service economy. The mobile app is just as functional, just as beautiful as any other ride hailing service you, uh, you might look at. It allows for advanced bookings, which is heretofore unavailable for a lot of services, uh, but it has all the protections of a regulated taxicab system with an agency requiring minimum insurance coverage, background checks on drivers, um, medallions, medical exams of, of drivers, nothing left to the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, referral and ranking system, although that um, is certainly something that could be available. It's not required, and it can't be used to um, impugn any of the service providers. The mobile app, in interestingly enough, for 800 drivers is being used as a tool to generate revenue through selling advertising space in vehicles, selling advertising space in the website, on the app, um, on tablets, and um, it's being used for the advantage of, of, of the 800 members. They're leveraging the network effect to build a brand, and as I said, they have a regulated 37% market share in the area. Sleek looking website, still under development. A mobile app that's now available on the iTunes store. Interestingly, using a licensed product uh, that was developed by uh, former workers in the transportation sector. There are now dozens and dozens of uh, ride hailing apps that taxi companies can choose from. And so there's this cottage industry of competition from which the likes of Green Taxi can choose um, without having to put, put their um, their, their capital structure at risk to build uh, soon to be uh, antiquated technology. It's been entirely self-financed, and this is really important from um, a labor supremacy standpoint, entirely self-financed. In fact, the regulator approved Green Taxi's financial and operational fitness without so much as a corporate credit card. They didn't have a line of credit. They took on zero dollars in debt. They financed the entire upstart with capital contributions from 800 members. They don't have a formal poison pill, and they have upwards of, they, they require two thirds vote to demutualize. And at 800 members, to call a quorum, get two thirds, um, would be quite a striking feat. 
ownership, 100% uh, driver owned, and this has become um, symbolically, energetically, philosophically, the most important characteristic of the business to its members. Um, photo credits go to Nathan Schneider during a recent uh, membership meeting. This is really democracy in action. Uh, these are members um, reviewing an innocuous uh, bylaws amendment that would clarify what member ownership means in the context of the cooperative. It was insufficient to provide bylaws conferring 100% ownership on the drivers. They needed to see that term used in multiple ways, uh, drilling ownership deeper than the DNA that it was otherwise in, um, enshrined in. I'm gonna um, try to cover some of the uh, kind of competitive characteristics of the business. So as I said, the business breaks open the monopoly stronghold on the taxicab sector while leveraging the best or most uh, user-friendly facets of the TNC market. TNC, Transportation Network Company in Colorado, that's what the regulation and law uh, uses to refer to the Ubers and Lyfts. They preserve over 90% of the value from fares for the drivers. This is in contrast to roughly 25 to 28% that gets skimmed off the top for a TNC driver. All the members have elected to become union members, CWA Local 7777, and the union has provided the critical technological backbone for member activities, providing the database functions, document portal, voting structure, and the cooperative has immense buying power and has leveraged that to obtain a fairly cost-effective license for the technology while preserving their flexibility to build technology or eventually consider what it might mean um, to undertake AI. Leadership is a really interesting uh, thing. This, this gentleman is the president of the board, Abdi Bouni. He um, is really the visionary behind Green Taxi, and he was also the founder of Union Taxi in Colorado. So he now has over a thousand driver owners under his belt. Um, who have him to thank. This is Green Taxi's uh, member portal. This is a, a, a fun one. I, this is all back of the napkin math. I take no responsibility for any inaccuracies um, or anything that's not borne out by the data, but some critical things that I want to point out. Look at the top row. So for a status quo taxi driver to drive a licensed taxi cab for an incumbent, one of those big metro taxi or yellow taxis, their rental rate is $800 per week. That's if they supply their own vehicle. It's $1,200 per week if they also rent the vehicle. That includes the lease, vehicle, and insurance. They pay their own gas, and of course they pay for all the incidentals. Um, I, I believe if they, don't, uh, if they don't lease the car, that, that, that also doesn't cover, or that covers uh, maintenance. That's per week. Contrast that with Green Taxi's value proposition at $80 a week. That covers branding, website, mobile app, insurance, um, all of the user services, dispatch, back office, $80 a week. We contrast that, I don't have actual aggregate numbers for Uber or Lyft, but 25 to 28%. The functionality in the website is all equivalent. You can reserve in advance. It has the same user feel as, as Uber or Lyft. Um, and the valuation math at the bottom was my own based on um, reported, reported numbers online. But we like to say green taxi is not for sale, so their valuation is completely and entirely irrelevant. What, is this, what does this mean? We're talking about drivers that would wake up each day and face the choice between taking the risk as uh, as the platforms would have it, uh, as a micro-entrepreneur, to take all the risk of entrepreneurship, buy the vehicle, go online, take the risk that they could develop a reputation, either make a part-time or full-time commitment to this, and be at the complete whimsy of the platform, or work for a, 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 basically a licensor from which they pay um, they wake up every day and have to, we roughly work six hours just to break even on their lease. And so the regulations cap them at say 10 hours of driving. They have the opportunity in four hours to put food on the table. And if we can disintermediate both the technology and the monopoly system and put all the value back in a system that confers ownership, economic incentive, control, and shave 
substantial percentages, these are folks who can now afford to make a middle class living um, in, in an environment where they have the protection of the labor union, they have the protection of collective decision making, democratic control, and economic participation. This is really what this is about. This is Denver, Colorado. And for anyone who's been to Denver, Colorado, this is not representative of the broader population. We've <laughs> created 800 entrepreneurs and 800 owners, owners of their economic decisions and, eco and owners of their economic destiny and that of their family. This is the single most important promise for folks who are raising families, putting spouses um, through school, allowing them to take time off, the, affording these folks the opportunity to take a vacation, um, go through higher levels of education. Um, this has just been an amazing journey for me to be a part of, um, and I'm excited to share their story, so thank you.